Oh my god. I can finally go outside again? What am I gonna do with myself? Oh my god, this... This hair is just... It's getting out of hand. <laughs> Hi folks, and welcome back to the channel. As you can tell from my extremely long, luxurious quarantine hair, it has been a long time since we've had this kind of heart-to-heart -heart talk, but companies are starting to open back up, parks are opening back up, and so I want to jump on here and have this kind of conversation um, and just sort of list off some of the five things that I'm going to be doing myself this next year. But these are all ideas I think you can carry with you to wherever you are. You just have to look up where the best place is. But I'm going to recommend some locations uh, specifically to near Toronto. So these are in no particular order. I'm just kind of spitballing off of top of mind. Number one, kayaking the Grand River. Now you can kayak it, you can tube it, you can canoe it, you can do whatever you prefer. There's actually multiple companies that uh, you can contact to rent kayaks. And the river is very long, so it kind of cuts through multiple municipalities. But I like to start in Paris, Ontario, because there's some very accessible launch points from there. The current is just strong enough that if you get tired, you can just kind of sit back and let the current still take you and you'll still flow down the river. And that's what's really nice is I think if you're inexperienced as a kayaker or a tuber or a canoe pilot, um, uh, it, it doesn't really matter because this is a very easy uh, beginner friendly river that you can take your friends on or just get started in the sport yourself. That being said, you should check um, water levels because sometimes it can become too shallow almost to, to go down the whole river. And like I said, there's companies that you can rent equipment from if you don't have it yourself. So that's super convenient. Oh, another place you can go tubing if you're not into heading over to Paris to, to do tubing on the Grand River is you could head up to Elora. Around the Elora Gorge area, there are also uh, tubing rentals where you can uh, tube down the river and have some summer fun. Okay, number two, uh, how about renting a tandem bike? We talked about this in a previous episode, which I will link above, is it this side? I could be wrong, I don't know. There's a great company called MBS Tandems. They're located in Mississauga, Ontario, and they not only sell tandem bikes, but they also uh, rent them so that you can try them out and see if it's something for you. It's something that I think everybody should try once, whether you like cycling or not. I think you should try tandeming because it's, it's a different feel. It's like, because you're on the same vehicle, uh, conversations are a lot easier. It's just, it's a whole heck of a lot of fun. Try it out. Number three is going to be caving or cave spelunking uh, at Warsaw Caves. Warsaw Caves is a couple hours from Toronto, but it is, I think, an incredible place to start getting to um, experience caving or spelunking, however you want to call it, because it's an actual, you know, uh, park where where people are constantly monitoring it because families are going in there all the time. They will always make sure that you know everything is is safe and that you know that it's not just gonna cave in on you all of a sudden i mean it could but it's unlikely i'm not selling this very well uh it's also a campground so because it's a little further from toronto let's say you don't want to make it as you know really long day trip uh why don't you just camp there as well and turn it into a full weekend thing the the caves are actually a lot larger and uh deeper than you would expect them to be for like a beginner cave system. Um, so you can probably spend hours exploring those things as long as you're not afraid to get a little dirty and not afraid to make contact with a little bit of bugs and maybe some bats. Oh, a bat in the cave. Oh, jeez. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay, oh, wow. bat just swept by. <laughs> There are bats in the cave. Yeah, so it's... we have bats in the cave. Uh, they are flying around us. It is terrifying. It is awesome. Uh, let's see what happens. <laughs> I mean, let's let's hope they don't bump into us. Oh, but... Maybe one of them will just smack us in the face. Bats are cool. But if you 
aren't afraid to get your feet wet, this is a great cave system to check out. Uh, not literally wet, there's no water in these caves, that's another great thing about these ones. Uh, I've discovered a lot of caves myself on our hikes and things like that, and um, they, they can be a lot dirtier and a lot um, more dangerous. Uh, but these ones, because they're constantly monitored and maintained, um, they're real safe, really fun, amazing time. Check it out. Number four is going to be a winter one because I want to also prep you for the coming winter and show you that there's continual adventures to be had at Island Lake Conservation Area, which is near uh, Orangeville in Ontario, which is about what, like 40 minutes from Toronto. Island Lake Conservation Area has fat bike rentals. And so, yes, you can rent a fat bike any time of the year, but it's especially awesome after like a blizzard snowstorm in the winter time because fat biking has the fatter tires so that you can go on sand and dirt and all that, but it also works on snow. You can check out our video that I've linked above on our winter fat biking adventure. It was really difficult because we did it right after a very heavy snowstorm but my goodness was that just an amazing day like we there's so many laughs so much fun uh and i can't recommend it enough it's one of those things where i was so exhausted by the end of the day that i could barely stand but it was such a good kind of exhaustion you know what i'm talking about like the kind where you're like oh yeah I had a good day, that's why I'm this tired. <laughs> okay, number five is kind of cheating because I'm gonna lump a bunch of things together, but there's just so many adventurous facilities that are gonna be opening up again. Uh, so I'm gonna kind of go through a couple of them. Uh, one is going to be rock climbing. Uh, I am a regular member of the cave in Mississauga. They're gonna be opening up again. Um, a lot of the gyms in the area are going to be opening up again and so you should check out any that are local to you. I had the privilege of working with The Hub, another rock climbing facility in, uh, located both in Mississauga as well as Markham. The gyms will be safe and clean for you to go and visit with your friends and I just, I can't wait. I'm so excited to get rock climbing again. My fingers are so weak, my skin is so soft. It shouldn't be this soft, it should never be this soft. I'm going to start touching all the rocks again. And you know, if rock climbing is not necessarily your thing, but you still want to test your might, an obstacle course is going to be a ton of fun, so go check one of those out. Another one is going to be treetop trekking, and they're located all over the place. There's one in Brampton, there's one in Barrie, there's one I believe in Hamilton, like they're, they're, they're all over the place. I've gone so many times, visited a whole bunch of them because it's just, it's so much fun to be able to do. It's like an obstacle course, but up in the trees. So you get the, the scenic views and the fresh air of like a hike, but you get the physical satisfaction of like an obstacle course. It's hard to describe, but like, there's zip lining between the things too, and so you get all sorts of different experiences that you can't replicate pretty much with anything else. If you've ever climbed a tree when you were a kid, this is definitely like the, the level 10 version of that. And the last one is something that I guess is kind of obvious and not super unique, but I gotta mention it, it's skydiving. <laughs> we did it with Skydive Swoop, which is located about uh, 40, 45 minutes away from Toronto. Nothing else that's going to give you the same level of adrenaline. And the thing is, I have a fear of heights, but it did not register to me uh, in the same way. It was like, it's like you're so high up that it's jumping into a painting. It's not really jumping and looking at the ground and thinking about falling and all that. You're flying uh, and the views are just unreal and the experience is unreal. And some people are going to say, why would I pay that much money for an experience that's like three minutes in length or whatever it is? And it's because you will never forget those three minutes for your life. Like, I, I did it years ago now and it is still seared into my brain like I did it yesterday because it is that unique of an experience and <laughs> if I could afford to, I would do it all the time and, and skydive all over the world. Um, so if anybody wants to fund me on my skydiving around the world uh, dream, just uh, hit me up. <laughs>
Yeah, so those are just some of the uh, adventurous facilities and companies that are going to start opening up and you'll eventually be able to partake in those as well. So overall, those are five, I kind of cheated, but those are five adventurous activities that I'm going to be doing and that I think you should pursue as well now that things are finally going to be opening up. I am double vaxxed. Yes! I want this to be over and I want us to be able to see nice things and have nice things. I miss hugs. Oh my gosh. I want to hug each and every one of you. The face mask thing can stay though. I think that kind of makes a lot of sense and probably don't have handshakes anymore and all that, but hugs, I want the hugs back. Anyway, uh, that's it for now. This video has gone on way too long. Um, yeah, I'll see you on the flip side. Bye.